Uh, another thing that Flutterflow has is API calls. Now, this is this is freaking huge, man. Like, you got to understand, this opens up the world. Like, you're going to force yourself to have to learn something you probably never learned before. If you're a no-code or a low-code type of CEO, this is still good for you because JSON files can take you a long way. You can make a SaaS product. You can make an app that makes millions of dollars just using this platform. So now you imagine with APIs, maybe you want to use Stripe. Maybe you want to use Square. Maybe you want to use some blockchain capabilities. Maybe you want to make a blockchain market research platform and pull blockchain APIs from Bitcoin and the Ethereum or Solana, et cetera. APIs allow you to do that. Simple. So on here, you would actually make, I don't want to say it's simple. I hate when people say that. <laughs> But it is simple, like Flutterflow makes it pretty simple. So you can add an API call or you can do a git, a post, delete, put, patch. You can place your headers. Usually you're going to have two, which is going to be like your content type application JSON. Then you're going to have your authentication uh, bearer, which is going to have your code or key or secret key on there that you actually use to call this API. We're not going to do that right now, but just having this opens up your mind to what you can do. Once you make one of these, you could actually click the response and test and test it to see that the JSON file populates with the information that you need from an API call. This is huge, man. Like, so if you think if you wanted to build like a, a Neo bank or online bank or a cash app, right? You can do that because you can use APIs. You can use banking as a service to create an entire bank, an entire cash app using Flutterflow. It is 1 billion percent possible and scalable because you're using Google Cloud platform services like Firebase to scale it. Huge, right? Let's move on. You have the images. You can throw images on here. These are like more like assets. Again, things you don't want to change. It's maybe like it's not a variable um, or something that somebody uploads or it's no crud, no create, read, update, and delete. It's nothing that no one actually modifies. So this could be your, your logo for your app. If you have certain backgrounds or designs that you want to put here, you would do that. If a list is empty and you want to have a certain design for something like that, these are very static images you would use. Here comes something else that's crazy is custom code. Look, for all the people that say in the box or no code platforms are not nimble, they're not uh, scalable, you can't do anything with the Flutterflow is different because you can actually add custom functions, custom widgets, which the, those were the drag and drop items that we were actually pulling out. So say you want a music player, but you want it to be custom. You can make your own. You're going to have to write code. So people call Flutterflow a no code platform. And by all means, it could be a no code platform, but really it's a low code platform. You know, it's appealing to say no code, but it's low code. Because at some point, I think if you're building something more robust, you're going to run into having to like do some type of code somewhere, somehow or something. You're going to have to. Uh, you can have custom actions. You can have custom files. This is where the actual code happens. You have your main Dart files and everything that you have for here. You can have custom code. You would add it. So say if you wanted to do a, a widget, you have this whole setup. They give you the boilerplate that you can actually add, bow, and you can start adding your arguments parameters, dependencies, and make this make sense as far as custom code. Uh, moving on, you have cloud functions. Uh, this could be something like uh, if you set up Stripe on uh, using Flutterflow, there's a built-in version of Stripe for Flutterflow, but big problem is you need webhooks. You need to be able to verify when someone pays through your app using Stripe that it actually happened. And you need to set up a webhook, a listener, to be able to listen for any changes for that customer when they use Stripe. That's one big thing where you would probably use a cloud function to actually complete that. Yeah.